Blank check with Griffin and David. Blank check with Griffin and David. Don't know what to say or to expect. All you need to know is that the name of the show is Blank Check. I was raised on a farm in Mooresville, Indiana. My mama died when I was three. My daddy beat the hell out of me because he didn't know no better way to raise me. I like baseball, movies, good clothes, fast cars, whiskey, and podcasts. What else do you need to know? <laughs> that was like the big trailer line too, right? That was like the, oh, the there, there were a check couple. it out. Johnny there were a Depp likes them. fast cars. There's a I, couple. I feel like this trailer for me was like at the time like was like the American Hustle trailer. That's I thought about that. Well, that list I also thought about the Don John trailer. Don John it's trailer. Got that same, yeah, my baddie. But this one had the my uh, boys, my girls. Uh, you my squeeze church. that into any dis- discourse you. How can. dare you? You swing it back you? over to the Don John trailer. <laughs> I'll never watch that movie in full. Me and my man could rob any bank anytime. They need to be everywhere all the time. That one and the. Uh, you want to take this ride with me? I want to take this ride. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I want to take dance. this ride with you. You don't know how to dance. <laughs> Ooh, what a performance. Um, Milwaukee? She is 90% capable of doing an English language performance in, uh, in this movie. Sure. Yeah, and it's the 10% where I totally lose right, everything. The, the 10%'s a little brutal. Because also, at the time, you were like, maybe this is the most facility she's ever going to have with the English language. And then the next year, she's like, fine. By, yeah. by inception, she's totally capable of giving a performance in the English language. But I'm not talking about accent. No, I'm I know, talking I know. about there are many lines in which you can tell she doesn't understand the rhythm of what she's saying. And There's, I think she was not incredibly fluent at the time they shot this But movie. did you see this thing on the Wikipedia? It's Wikipedia. Where yes. it's like she trained herself to speak in a French, Canadian, Menominee, Wisconsin, Chicago accent. I'm like, well, that's who fucking it... trained her in that? Right. Yeah, she doesn't sound like any person I've ever heard in the world ever. <laughs> but, but they're saying she that... sounds like five different things to sort of Certainly throw you off no. the scent. They're like, uh, that, that thing you think is her not knowing, well, that, that's the Wisconsin part. I, I like. think she Certainly trained with not. Bjork. <laughs> that's who she sounds like this whole movie. Milwaukee? Yeah. And then she my does. mama and I moved to Milwaukee. You are a gangster. You are a gangster. <laughs> she does sound like Bjork. Right? You nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Because then she she gets a more mellifluous kind of once she's in the Nolan movies and the mm. now. Now I feel like she's totally a, a fully capable bilingual actress. Here's my question. What? Is she more like sort of uh, easy to understand in Big Fish six years earlier? Yeah, yeah weirdly. Yes. So maybe it's just she's trying to wrangle weird this weird this accent, accent and accent. she's like. That's you a know, really good point. I was going to say, you know. She's a lot more natural. I feel like fit. in Big Fish, she's like, Billy, you have to chill out. You know, like, it's like, just, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't say she's like great. that. <laughs> yeah. And what if she, hey, Billy, what's up? That's what she hey, sounds Billy, like. Billy, come on, chill out. <laughs> Albert Finney's charming. Here's another thing. Let's just talk about all these other things before we start talking about the things we're supposed to talk about and the order we're supposed to talk about them in. Uh, this weird period where it's like, let's cast Hollywood's most handsome, symmetrical men to play, you know, a, a pug-nosed, <laughs> flat-faced J. Edgar Hoover. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, weird. yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to, f- let me find a young Hoover. Who else has played Hoover? Obviously, well, well, DiCaprio. DiCaprio. Right. I was looking through some he, other ones. He was, he was not, he was not leading man quality. He was not. I mean, he looked better as a young man than he, he does. He better as a young when man. When he's like a, a bulldog. When but he's, he you know. also looks like a very young old man in that photo. <laughs> He never looked handsome. The way they, that he's played well, here and pr- in another movie that I'm going to think of where someone else, you know. Dylan like, Baker plays him in Selma. I was going through yeah. a list of them. It's like usually they just play him as like a feat, right? right. It's sort of this like coded kind of like, well, you know, J. Edgar Hoover. Yeah. Have you ever heard about him? And like, so it's just someone going like, catch the criminals, please. You know, <laughs> like like that. That's quite right? an impression. Yeah. <laughs> Dave put a little hand on his hip. Just a little hand. I don't even know where he got that hand from. Yeah, where did that hand come from? <laughs> I got two of these things. Tiny little hand. <laughs> Who else has played? I mean, Hoskins um, plays him in um, right. in Nixon and is so good. Yeah. That insane scene that I think was initially a deleted scene where he's like squeezing water on plants and he's it's I, I've so I've never weird. seen uh, Nixon. He's good in it though? Incre- I mean, Nixon's one of my favorite movies. I fucking love that movie so much. Um, like I- the full crazy Oliver Stone, right. however long it is version, you know, four hour version or whatever. I was just looking at a list of people. who Other people played him. Steven Root played him in All the Way. Makes sense. On HBO, but McKean played him on Broadway. Yes. Ernest Borgnine, who's the guy who you feel like should have been playing Jagger Hoover, 
did it in some shitty movie yeah, in Blood 2000. Feud. Um, no, did it more than once. Really? Yes. Okay. Also played him in a movie called Hoover. Right, that's but the yes, one I'm But also of. something called Blood Feud. You've got Pat Hingle. I mean, yeah. A bulldog of a man yeah. played him in uh, Citizen Cone, which is that uh, James Woods as Roy Cohn movie. Oh, boy. Um, James Woods played Kelsey Roy? Kelsey Grammer in uh, some play. Oh. In the Harry Shearer comical musical uh, J. Edgar. Exclamation point. Mm. Can I just... That sounds good. I'm just that realizing. sounds like good casting. Wait, James Woods played both Roy Cohn and Rudy Giuliani? So he's, not in. he's slowly been moving into the yep. Trump biopic. I mean, he's, he's like, he's getting everyone in the circle. That would just right? unfortunately be good. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yes. Like, even though he would be like, I'm playing this man because he's an American here. And you'd be like, yeah, whatever. Like, <laughs> let's just get this on film. I'm going to run this by <laughs> our guest, who I won't introduce yet. Sure. We, we had a little text thread going with some of our friends. Mm-hmm. Joe Reed, Katie Rich. We were talking about SNL stuff. Oh. And we were saying, like, this This feels like a time where SNL creatively could benefit from, like, cleaning the house. Mm. Doing, like, a hard reset like they did in, you know, 80 or, or uh, 96 or 97, whatever it was, right? Right. And then Sims made his point, which has been haunting me for the last I, 10 I, days. I, or I really, it's like, sort of, it's like Joaquin sticking a dagger in Russell Crowe. Like, you can't shake what I right. said. Because we were like, who should, like, I don't even want to see anyone play Trump. Yeah, because there was something, who would play Trump? Oh, Beck Bennett, like, oh, great. You know, right. Wears, um, he goes like, uh, China. And like. then Sims <laughs> had the point, which was, they should bring back Tim Robinson to do Trump. I would right. love that. And I, I was mean, like, that's the only Trump I, I want to see. I can't, do I mean, I just can't, just, do just let him scream. Yes. I can't just stop let thinking about exactly. Tom, Tim Robinson. Um, I was just talking to Bobby Finger about um, oh the great Bob Finger the, ba- the great Bob guess. Finger about the way he's obsessed with the way Finger. Tim Robinson yeah. says at all yeah and at, at, at all, at all. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Jesus it's so just let him go off like too small a slice <laughs> oh my too god. small a slice oh my god he's so funny uh, but if it was show, just me, vein popping out of his forehead oh my red god face, yeah, yeah, screaming yeah. nonsense and just escalating in a way that's unpredictable i don't want him to use proper words i just right. want him to like scream and escalate i right. didn't watch i didn't get to that show for like a week I wanted to eat a table <laughs> you know like and just drool <laughs> I didn't get and to then that, say live from here. Uh, what's sorry. it called? Um, I think you should leave. I think you should leave. Yeah, I didn't get to it for like a week. Imagine yeah. the hype, you know, that uh, yeah, was, yeah. right? Like a week of yeah. everyone I know being like, "It's just so funny," yeah. which is like the worst thing you could do mm-hmm. to a sweet little comedy show like that. Yeah, and then I watch it. And I'm like, "This is fucking hysterical!" Like you yeah, know, like it amazing. completely met the hype. Have you watched his characters episode? Yeah, oh, I love. He's he's got that like old timey like. <laughs> gangster guy to doing the like oh no i'm broke <laughs> that i think about constantly now that i'm in school that sketch where he's trying to get them to buy the props for the gangster yes. movie black slick bag hair wigs 200 of them <laughs> they look like plastic the meatball <laughs> they look like little what is it little dog turds they smell really bad <laughs> stanzos Stand up. 200 stanzas. Stand <laughs> I thought about that sketch a lot watching when, this movie. When they <laughs> finally relent and go like, we'll buy 50, he goes, yeah, you gotta buy them all. <laughs> oh, it's not worth when it on my nice end. to him and then, I mean, that's a great. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite sketch? Um, We've talked about this already. I think it, it changes from week sure. to week, but right now I'm really in on the hot dog costume one. Love the hot dog. What yeah. about you? Uh, two small slice. I mean, that one's perfect. Yeah. Because for me, it's Garfield. He should play Trump. Uh, and we're talking about a movie today starring another man who's played Trump. Yes, and as our guest at a movie that's also sponsored by Stan So Fedoras. <laughs> <laughs> the real Chicago gangsta movie. Oh, boy. We brought in Chicago's finest. Dennis Farina. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am. I'm back. <laughs> Fran mm-hmm. Hoffner. Yeah. Here I am. Every, Every time, time Fran's oh my on, gosh. A ratings. massive ratings pop. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. I think The Holiday feels like a shorter movie than this movie. No I'll question. say it. Um, is the holiday shorter than this movie? They're like about the same. I think about, about like a minute. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? One is like an accounting of the right. era of bankrupting. Right. One's about two nice ladies who do a house swap. Is the holiday 217? <laughs> That's my I guess. believe the holiday is 218 to this one's 220. 219. Or, uh, yeah, incredible. Like, you know, so, 219 and yeah. shame. Um, <laughs> I mean, you saying this movie that no one remembers. This does it was feel a hit. like borderline a movie that doesn't exist. Yeah. For a massive hit starring three major people, including America's 
favorite gangster, Johnny Depp. John Depp. <laughs> yeah, he's a gangster, all right. Yeah. Here he is. I wish Jager Hooper would this. round him up. <laughs> I remember this coming out and being a big deal. It was just like I didn't exist that summer. Is sort of you how did, I feel. That was your summer of non-existence? Was, well, that was the summer I discovered recreational drinking. So, oh, <laughs> hell yeah. so I wasn't going to the movies. I was going to people's basements. 2008. No, this was 2009. 2009, yeah. Is 2008 your big summer? 2008 was my big summer. <laughs> big Griffey out of it. <laughs> yeah. Summer in the city. What's what's so special about 2008 in your life? Oh, Apart huge, from like Speed Racer. Obviously. Huge summer. I dropped out of college. Fuck yeah. I was living in my Fleabag Do apartment. It, sure. Fleabag. On like the fifth season floor. Two. Wait, was Phoebe Waller? Walking. <laughs> I lived with Phoebe Waller Bridge season two. It was it was me, hot priest. Yeah, yeah you, I got a yeah, take on the were... priest, but it'll be too late by the time I say it aloud. I think it's, it's short, less about him being a priest and more about dating an optimist. Very hot to date an optimist. That's what I'll say. I think it's a fantastic someone who thinks yeah. that things are going to be okay versus like someone who wears a uh, uniform. I think that's a great take. David's pointing at himself I'm as an optimist. an optimist. I don't agree. You don't think so? I don't think you're an optimist. Really? No. Mm. What am I? I think realist? you are actually. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, you are. No. Way in, Griffin. You've been trying to counteract my negativity. Yeah, my you've pessimism been, you're, you're in a you're in a pessimistic mood. Well, for it, to be fair, it's only because uh, the world is bad, oh, here and we I go. hate everything. Here within we go. It. Here he goes again. Can oh, I say maybe yeah. something you could do is kind of like stick it to the man and start maybe robbing some banks. Kapow! Give, the, give the public a, loves a that. reason to believe again. Yeah. Um. Can I say a thing about Hot Priest? Yeah. Uh. Such a great uh fucking uh a counterpoint. To the uh, fallacy mm. that uh, uh, an out gay actor will never be believable having sexual chemistry with a woman on screen. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. One of those two things mm-hmm. that keeps actors in the closet is like, right, they'll never right. buy oh, you as an action star. It. They'll right. never buy you romancing a woman. That's the most chemistry anyone's had on screen in a year or two. Incredible. Yeah. Amazing. Right? Chemistry. No question. Mm-hmm. Not hyperbolically. The thing about him. Off that, the charts. No, no, I agree with you fully. Yeah. The thing about him that shocks me is that he was introduced to me as this like truly like snivelly kind of freaky villain guy uh-huh. yeah and he did that for a while and like so when i'm he's being positioned to me as like hey don't you love this guy i was afraid i'd be like but he's you know he's moriarty yeah and you know and then uh, i think instantly... it's so nice that he gets to have this part <laughs> yeah Great. after doing 100 all that time as moriarty yeah he's in this fucking black mirror episode that's just okay but when the yeah. episode starts you do the first episode of the second season i do feel like i'm sitting there going like is there some turn does he turn right. out to be exactly a yeah. he's in he scares in a him scream. Yeah. right he screams so much as moriarty that's like the thing of that character His is like is what moriarty. time he's talking he what time he's screaming just like, yeah i get it you're <laughs> a criminal mastermind it's okay okay so uh this episode's coming out in august uh-huh. we have our hot uh streaming tv takes from uh april and may it's not mm-hmm. like there's more tv shows coming right this is it we're gonna no, take I, a break for a while right i, I, oh, wait, what I heard, I'd like I heard that all the good Bosch ones have been canceled really quickly now. if we could okay can i throw out a prediction on the record <laughs> yeah i think Bosch will be canceled by the time this comes out oh, oh yeah fuck. hell uh-huh. yeah i think one might be able to see a pattern I know, I, I know what you're saying. We've talked about it. Winky, winky. Hey, maybe not though. What if Bosch pulls through? Then I eat my hat and I just look like a loser. All right. So, do you... <laughs> yeah, what if that's the bet? It's like, well, what do you have to do if you lose? I don't know. I just look like a loser. Yeah, I just oh, okay, am, yeah. have to live in the fact that I failed at life. Uh, I think. Uh, no, I'm fine. Yeah, you're uh, fine. I, but I predict uh, Sneaky Pete and Bosch will both be canceled by the time this episode comes out. And read into that whatever pattern you. Pete be sneaky. Yeah, what is so? What is Pete's well, deal? All right, so what? Are you, we all know Pete. Like mm-hmm. this is the president. We all know sure, a standard sure, Pete. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Regular. You're one of the military. I know a regular Pete. Pete. Yeah. And then like mm. Giovanni Ribisi just leans into the whiteboard, like half his face is like, "What would he be sneaky?" <laughs> Whereas in this, he's creepy. <laughs> the creep. Let's yeah, say yeah. this movie's called Public Enemies. What's the podcast called? Blank check. What's the miniseries With called? With Griffin and David. I'm Griffin. David. It's a podcast about filmographies. Directed to a massive success early on in their careers, you see. <laughs> <laughs> Get a series of blank checks to make whatever crazy passion products they want, you see. Sometimes those checks clear and sometimes they bounce, baby. <laughs> Mini series is called Cast the Pot Heakins. Don't at me. And uh, She's pot a great cast. She's pot a great cast. Or pod like cast Which is awful to say. Okay, I'll say okay. Stop saying I'm being targeted. Friend, can you take down the banner you put in our studio for pod like cast? It's got light and electronic. <laughs> I got banner. here so early to put that up. And I would love boy. to keep There's it there. There's a skywriter outside the window writing pod like cast. 
This is um, what I do with Rutgers University's money. <laughs> Fran Hoffner. Here to talk, it, Chicago. Here. Here to talk Chicago. Michael Chicago. Chicago. Big Midwest. Big Wisconsin. Midwest. Yep. All uh, of it. You did a lot of research on this episode. I did. And some of it is just like uh, inherited from my past. I okay. encountered my past many times doing research for this. Do you feel like it, like like Chicago, do you feel walking down the streets like this? This is where they breathe. Like this is. This is so Oh, yeah. Ground. Yeah, it's like injected into every... Anytime you go by the movie theater, do you cry? The, the biograph? The age of crying. Crying. Yeah. David? Yeah. And the immortal words of Officer Anne Lewis. Uh-huh. From I'm, Robocop. I'm a mess. Okay, you're From the a film mess. Robocop. Right. I'm a mess. Yeah. And, you know, people go, oh, why don't you exercise? Why don't you eat better? Why don't you do this? It's, you know, easier said than done. The tr- difficult thing, David... Is learning healthier habits. What if I told you there was a program for all your health and weight loss needs that you could use that doesn't talk in that voice that you were just doing? It doesn't talk like this. <laughs> right. You need to do... No, no, no. Well, that would be great. Why don't you tell me? Go it's ahead and It's not like, me. you know, you have to like have a training app and then have a calorie counter right. app and then have like a meal plan app. Uh, um, I got enough apps on my phone. I don't have room for five apps. Right. Noom. I need one service. Our friends at Noom. Our friends? can combine all that into one app, one big program, helps you track your health, track your weight loss, track your calories, track your workouts, can add a goal specialist who encourages you towards certain you know, things you might want to do, like getting out of the house every day, going to see people every day, working big out every day, you know, whatever. for me. And there's this community of members that can keep you motivated and accountable. It's like a workout bestie yeah. all in one place. Yeah, we're talking about physical stuff. We're talking about psychological stuff. Exactly. It's we're not just food or stuff. not it's just okay. working out. Habit stuff. Because I have bad habits. Yes. I don't like waking up. Right. I don't like the sun. Um, I've been using it for, well, for lots of things, but like tracks your food mm. intake in a way that's not just you need to eat this many calories a day sure. and you ate too many. Sure. But like. You put in your foods and it's like, this was kind of a bad food. You know, this is a heavily processed thing. This was good. More of this, you know, those like sort of green, yellow, red kind of like. We're, we're talking about the fundamental building blocks of hashtag hot David 2019. <laughs> That's right. That's what we're talking about. Really. And it's about accountability. It's about yeah. someone holding you accountable yeah. for how you're conducting your day-to-day life. Badly, poorly. Yeah, you actually might uh, benefit from Noom, Griffin. Yeah, I should. Well, I only we had some. It's better than that cloud offer. that keeps following you around everywhere you go. I got a little bit of a storm cloud following me around. Um, Noom's an appetite changing solution that can help users learn to develop a new relationship with food through personalized courses. It's based in psychology, teaches you why the thing you do the things that you do, and arms you with the tools to break bad habits, replace them with better ones. If you ask them, they would say it's based on a cognitive behavioral approach. That's what they would say if you ask them point blank. That's true. Me? I'd just say it works. Yeah, no, it is It is great, and you don't have to change it all in one day. Thank God. Small steps make big progress. You can sign up for your trial today at Noom. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash check. What do you have to lose? Visit Noom dot com slash check to start your trial today. That's Noom dot com slash check. The last weight for those files. Woo. The last weight loss program you'll ever need. It, here's, I just came up with a, a, a tagline for them, a, a catchphrase. What do you have to lose? <laughs> Other than a couple pounds. Well, there you go. You know what I'm saying? Well, there you go. And Ben's giving me a thumbs up. So uh, we were supposed to record this a week ago. We had to cancel because I couldn't stop having diarrhea. He couldn't stop oh. uh, emitting from his it was diarrhea. I thought you, Oh. I you thought... Th- you were throwing up? Uh, well, here's Some the of thing. that, too? A L- little bit of both. A mm-hmm. little bit of a, like a push me pull. Salt you. and pepper. Yeah. Mm. Pepper. Um, <laughs> but you were already. Uh... Boy. This is one of those, huh? Yep. I guess so. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I want this. It's summer vacation. You bring this out of us, I feel like. Yeah, it's certainly David. You make silly. David well, very. I called it, right? Fred and I are pals. Yeah, we're pals. We yeah, were laughing. We, we, we like to. <laughs> we're laughing. We're laughing. <laughs> And when well when we canceled last yes. week, then David and I went to go see Stephen Graham vehicle Rocket Man. That's right. Oh, so Stephen Graham's like, oh yeah, uh, uh, fucking I don't you can be on my label, right? Yeah. Uh, Amazing. David just put a pen in his mouth to uh, pretend it was a cigar. A fucking cigar, don't I? And then Bryce Dallas is like, Richie, I'll have to fry your dinner in the bin. <laughs> Remember that part? I'm obsessed with Bryce Dallas in this movie. <laughs> they put that on the soundtrack. Her going, I'll have to fry they your did? dinner in the bin. Oh, <laughs> my God. Making my text notification. Reggie. 
So this movie is based on a book that Fran has with her today. Yeah. You had done some research uh, uh, when we were going to record a week ago. Did you do even more to fill in in this last week? No, I just you reread. I reread some parts okay. that I thought were like most interesting and tried to like clarify some things with the with the movie. There are things that the movie I feel like leaves out that maybe would have made the movie feel more cohesive. Not even like, oh, I would have loved this to be in here because it was interesting versus like there needed to be this relationship needed to be clarified. I don't know. I get this movie is sort of like I think man doesn't care about that at all. I mean, certainly not in this movie because he's I, not up for clarifying anything. The first 20 minutes of this movie and I had not seen it since it came out in theaters. I, I remember liking it when it came out in theaters. Yeah. I was amped for it. Yeah. It was my second biggest summer ever. <laughs> so, what, yeah, what's what's 09 like? Um, let me think. 09. You've dropped, uh, fully dropped out of college at this point. Are you still living in the flea bag apartment? Uh, no. No, I wasn't. You know, the thing that was great with the flea bag apartment was that... Is um, that the one where there were, like, four different mattresses and areas in, like, a living room or whatever? Right, like, and I lived in the shit. living room on four right. mattresses is stacked on top of each York? other. This is in New York. Okay. Three mattresses, maybe. Stacked on top of each other uh, in the corner of an apartment behind a couch. But I would come home, and my uh, roommates would be having dates in my bedroom, since mm-hmm. my bedroom was the, was living, the living room. room. For, for sort of interesting that you uh, bring the date there. DVD and chilling. Mm. DVD and chilling. DVD. Oh yeah. yeah. That's 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 the aux. We were interesting. Yeah, we used to DVD and chill. Netflix by mail and chill. Yeah. But I was in for this movie. I saw it with a large group of people. Everyone else was kind of like frustrated with it. I was like defending it. I never watched it again. Mm. And then I was watching it, and the first twenty minutes, I was like fuck, do I like this more than Heat? Mm. Mm -hmm. And then I forgot that the movie just kind of, like... Bounces around. Yeah. It's all... Yeah. It's very all over the place. I'll I'll vibe with it for a while, and then I'll, like, get totally lost with it. Yeah. There's stuff in it I love. I think the setup's amazing. But this was this this book that came out. This phenomenon Yeah, this Brian Burrow book. Public Enemy is America's Greatest Crime Wave in the Brain. But it's like all these guys. Like, man sort of narrowed this down to the Dillinger. Dillinger, But this is like Dillinger and Carpus and the Barker brothers Mm -hmm. and Bonnie and Clyde and Pretty Boy Floyd and Machine Gun Kelly. Uh, The whole early 30s depression era crime wave. Because it was this like 10 month thing where there were just like constant crimes. And there are a lot of like really interesting other ones outside. Just like. The wave of kidnappings is very odd. This is like when yeah. kidnapping is big as like the new crime. In the trailer, one of the things, one of the, like part of the tagline is like in the golden age of crime, which I think it's not wrong, but it's no, a it's very totally true. weird phrase to use the golden age of crime as if you're saying like the golden age of jazz. Yeah. Like you're describing crime as if it's an art form. But there is that element in this time period in that crime was also sort of this weird like performance art. Right. Totally, like crime yeah. was entertainment. This was right. the first time the criminals were like celebrities who were able to use uh, ca- like cameras to their advantage. Right. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, th- cameras that, and cars, newsreels, also, cars, right? right. All you could get stuff. away. But it's also the first time that America is dealing with crime on a level that's past just like the local sheriff being right. like, "Hey, you." I hear you shot a man in the street in the face. And the guy's like, well, he looked at me funny. And the right. sheriff's like, eh, this all sounds fine. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Feed the man to the pigs and let's move on. Right. right. You know, it is crazy to think like just being like uh, alive in this time and just being like, wow, crime's really booming. <laughs> all these big criminals. Thinking of going to crime school, yeah. maybe yeah. doing a couple years of criming. I'm going to remember this for the rest of my life. Like being alive at a period of time where all these criminals were working together. <laughs> all at the peak of their power. Uh, and also just like that. Banks were these like gigantic buildings, right? Like, and like money was just in na- sacks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's the thing. Like, you were like far enough from like the old west where it was like, okay, things have settled down now. Mm-hmm. But then, but like, it's a little old westy, right? So then yeah. the the structure starts to come in, and then they're like, we're gonna get back into this crime thing. But now there's more money and bigger places, and the having cars feels sort of like the sort of you know futuristic western. I'm sort right. of like, is this movie steampunk? But simply no. Um, but you know but what I mean? Simply where it's like, no. Yes. <laughs> it is this it's like combination. It's punk or whatever, right? right. It's like 30s yeah. punk. Or, yeah. I don't know. Well, that's that's certainly, I think, the thing that turned people uh, off most about this movie is also the thing that now holds up the best about it, which is just how radical this thing looks. It looks incredible. 
I think it looks unbelievable. From, like minute one, from the whole like uh, the breakout in the prison yeah. where mm-hmm. it's like all the sky, like all the negative space. The right. Prison, yeah. Shit. I think it's still Indiana, baby. Ten years later, looks better. Beautiful. I was say that every ten gorgeous, minutes. Gorgeous, gorgeous. State. No, I don't like Indiana. Oh. I think a ten years later still looks better than most digitally shot movies because yes. it's it like now most digital movies are trying and failing to represent the look of film. And the three directors who I think have used digital the best are Soderbergh, Mann, and Fincher. Because they're the three people who are like boys. really tech obsessed mm-hmm. and are just like, why are we chasing film? Right, right. Like right. that's gone. If we're using a digital video camera, make it its own thing. Right. And I think it helps that like uh, all three of those guys are like weird computer brain, like mm-hmm. detail obsessed. Yeah. Um, but this movie, just the like infinite depth of field yeah. and focus. And they're just like shots they pull off, like when they're in the car, moving full speed and the background behind them is perfectly in focus. That's, that's what mm-hmm. he loves. And you see both the guys in the car and the dirt on the windshield all in focus. Right. And this is the yeah. first one that's 100%. All, all dig. And it feels like they've hit a new, like this is 2K or whatever it is, mm-hmm. a new resolution standard that gives him the clarity he always wanted and uh and and more importantly the immediacy that like i feel like this book when it came out was a big deal because it was like the way these things happen with major subjects every like 10 years someone will be like i've written the new definitive book on this subject yeah and the the note they always give in the reviews is like they somehow make it feel so current they do and it reads they make it feel contemporary totally and it's like a chunk book but it reads yeah. very quickly it's and like very ex- excitingly and i think the way it's shot also heightens the like general like accuracy of what man is going 100%. for also and it's like it's not all how it actually was it's full of sort of like little inaccuracies that like serve the narrative which is totally fine but the way it is shot just like heightens how true to the past man wants it to feel which it does the clarity of the video like makes me think about the details more yes right yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. where i'm like looking at all of their outfits and you're so much oh, more aware of the texture and the right. materials of the outfits and Agreed. the the textures of the cars and all these sorts Ooh. of things and then es- michael mand loves textures oh I yeah feel. yeah especially like all the gunfights this must look like what it felt like to be in chicago at that time where it's like ah go in the picture house might see a, a johnny get shot in the head <laughs> You know, I remember seeing it in the theater uh, just that it was so fucking loud, like really loud, so loud, which I love like that. The machine gun was just deafening. You couldn't hear anything else. Right. But I think it also works. It looks depressed. Yes. It's not lush. It's not like sepia tone. Like this looks like no, and it's not like sick place. You you know, everything's kind of wasted and drawn. Right. Which is, that's another thing of, like, owning what digital does yeah. well. Mm-hmm. That you're also, shot early right. on of the lady who's, like, take me with you. And Johnny Depp's like, I mean, Dillinger's like, no thanks. And then you just <laughs> see, see her at the farm and you're like, fuck. See, that's, yeah. like, the no point No wonder of the movie. she wants to hang out with the bank robbers. Indiana. Where you're, that's the point where you're that's, like, is, does this rule? I'm like, is this his masterpiece? Yeah, right, mm-hmm. right, right. Because right. it feels like in the first 20 minutes, like, it sets up, like, this should be Michael Mann's ultimate statement. Mm-hmm. It feels incredibly unfocused. Mm-hmm. Like, he didn't hone in on a central story. And Michael Mann is really good when there's, like, one central hook, and then from there you can put all the detail onto it. And I feel like there are a couple things he's, like, going for here. Mm-hmm. But there isn't, like, one spine he finds. He also just loves, like, process and detail. Right. And so sometimes he gets a little hung up on, I like, well, we got, we got to include that then Dylan J did this bullshit. Or, right. You know, right? Like, you know, he sort of, he wants to be linear about I think it's it. a little, like, forced through the, trees a little bit but i still think it's pretty great it's a pretty uh, uh beautifully made film and when you're watching it you're like wow what a movie here it is yeah hollywood and, baby chicago baby what if michael mann's next film was a deeply researched deeply dished uh uh that's good fact-based thank you for saying that's super good. terse three-hour epic about the battle between Second City and IO. I would love that. I would love to see how M- man would shoot Piper's Alley, which is <laughs> the go. building that Second City is in. I'm going to keep doing this. Yeah. Uh, like, all my references are the most obvious Chicago things in the world. Like, I don't have anything for you. Okay, right. then. The league that's... is set there. Okay. Manzukas. Yeah. And Classic Chicago other... boy. Middle Chicago. Sure, yeah. Is he a Chicago boy? 
No. I don't think so. Where's he from? I don't know. He's been sad. I had listened to him lock the gate. Like, even like <laughs> TJ and Dave could have been like oh old time. Yeah. It's, it's, honestly, it's honestly kind of crazy that neither TJ nor Dave showed up in this. Because yeah. they've, they've got like faces, like guys who would have been around. Who the fuck right. are TJ that's... and Dave? Are you kidding? Oh, come on. Whoa. I don't know what wow. that is. Wow. Oh, like really famous, long running Chicago two man improv. Uh, possibly group. The, the two finest improvisers and alive. TJ, way up there. TJ does the Sonic commercials now. And Dave Pasquazi was uh, in this every is the most season Chicago of shit Veep. I've ever heard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Veep. He's great on Veep. Veep. He, he's her, he, um, he plays Selena's husband, ex husband. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's good. He's good. I love that guy. I but, think yeah. Christian Bale would probably play Dave, right? In the Michael Mann. I would love to see that, yeah. And then, I don't know, like Not Jesse either. Plemons would play. <laughs> he would play TJ. TJ. Man could do a lot with Plemons. I was thinking Plemons, Plemons would have been face. amazing. Well, this is also the thing with this movie is that all these guys were like 32. And, yeah. And these guys just look slightly too old. And there's the argument of like, Depp well, is Depp is way too old. They lived harder mm-hmm. in those days. They, they did. More, sure. But he, did. yeah. Have you guys? I did because I, I, Depp we're... is like forty five, I think. Yeah, yeah it's weird. Uh, Johnny Depp has a scarf on in his Wikipedia picture. <laughs> What's surprising? Oh my god, I feel he's so cold. bad for him. <laughs> oh, his neck was you think cold. He was a chilly boy that day. I feel so bad for him. He must have lost his other four scarves right before that photo was taken. <laughs> you think a scarf thief so came naked. and took him? He looks so bare. How old do you think Bale is when this movie is? Oh, that's a great question. Thirty six. Uh, yeah, I was going to say 34. 30, 35. Wow! Yeah, split the difference. Look at us. Um, I love Bale. It's my my favorite Bale performance. See, this that's is what I was crazy say. to me. I think that's so weird because I love that's, Bale. He's doing, and I don't think he's a very nothing. exciting guy to like. No, but he's one no. of my favorite actors. Yeah, and I think he's a lot weirder than people give him credit for. Sure, but you tend to not like him very much. Not dislike him. Where are you getting this from? That drives me crazy. I he's only got Christian one Bale. Davy nomination. It's hard to make the five. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for setting me up on that. He lost to Waltz for Inglorious Bastards. You can't beat Waltz that year, right? Like, I feel like Waltz yeah. is super undeniable. Well, give us the five. Yeah, give us the five. Paul Schneider for Bright Star. Of course, mm-hmm. your favorite. Was Christian. that your number one movie that year? Correct. Uh-huh. That's an incredible it's a beautiful performance movie. where he's like, I have failed him. Yeah. I have failed him. He's such a good I love actor. that movie. Um... Christian Bale for Public Enemies, Waltz for Inglorious Bastards, mm-hmm. Fastbender for Inglorious Bastards. Oh. I would have nominated both. Yeah, Fastbender would have made my heart and no and Peter Capaldi for In the Loop. Wow. Oh, maybe it would have been Capaldi for me. I mean, he's a That's... threatening winner. Who were the actual? I'm trying to remember now who the actual nominees were in 2009. Let's find out. The Fastbender definitely would have made my five. So I'm saying Bale wouldn't have made my five. And that I think still might be my it. favorite Fastbender performance. In uh, Inglorious he's Bastards, so... he's yeah. pretty Fuck phenomenal. Yeah. Good mm-hmm. in that. Also, Inglorious Bastards is one of those movies where you could realistically fill out a five with just Inglorious Bastards performances. Probably. Totally, yeah. Um, Matt Damon for Invictus, which is oh, not an boy. interesting Rugby. performance, but we've talked about how it's, Trevor Noah said it's the greatest South African accent he's ever seen on screen right. by you know, an American. Sure. Movie. Yeah. It's just not an interesting character. No, he's, you the know, Mandela's like, you should be in the rugby team. And he's like, all right, sounds good. Yeah, and then he's in it. There's that huge, huge scene where he lets his maid stay in the living room and watch oh, TV fuck. with him. Get that movie. That movie is. I love Clint Eastwood in that diarrhea. movie. Sucks. Yeah, that movie is <laughs> so bad it's insane. Um, you know, Clint Eastwood should not maybe be handed that kind of a movie mm. with those sorts of dynamics. Yeah. Right. Right. Simple answer. Right. right. Yeah. Sully, we can wrestle with it because the FAA, you know, and the flight attendants or whatever, whatever, whatever that stupid, the flu, the board, what are they, NSTC, what are they called? Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, Eastwood can paint you them as the same thing twice. I don't remember. I've only seen Sully 12 times. Okay. <laughs> All right. The other nominees were Woody Harrelson for The Messenger, which is a good performance. Oh, I, yeah, definitely would have made my uh, list. Christopher Plummer for The Last Station, which is a demented nominee. <laughs> Insane. And I believe he's also the lead. Like, I think he's it was a like total category fraud. Yeah. I would say uh, him split with uh, McAvoy, right? Right, because does Helen Mirren get nominated for best lead actor? I think she does. That's insane. I think that it was just the classic, like, just put them wherever they'll get the nomination. That's another movie that sucks, and it also feels like he got the nomination because they were like, Christopher Plummer's about to die. We're never going to get another oh, chance to so nominate funny. him. Right. And then he gets Seriously. another win and another nomination after that. Oh, and then, you know what? This is kind of a mistake by me because the other nominee is Stanley Tucci for The Lovely Bones, which is a bad performance. Yeah. But isn't Julie and Julia the same year? That's the same year. So maybe he should be on my list because he's so fucking good in that. He's so fucking good in Tucci. that. Mm. I'm trying to think who else. Because my, my number one of 2009 would have been Sugar. Then I think Inglorious Bastards. Great movie. Then. 
I mean, you got a serious man that year. You got What's the Hurt Locker. Mackie would have been yeah. one of my five. Good. He's a good boy. Rafe. Rafe for that one. Um, I just love that part of that movie. Rafe's, sure. It, Rafe's really good at that. Coraline. Coraline. Coraline is that year. Yeah. Um, in the Loop, like I said. Uh, Avatar, Star Trek, Funny People, mm. uh, Where the Wild Things Are. It's a good year. Can I say? A lot I, of fun. I rewatched Funny People like a week ago. That movie's amazing. I think that that movie's Yo fantastic. I, I love. Yo Teach is great. Yo Teach is like one I, of my favorite bits from any yeah. episode. Is Funny People's reputation fully rehabilitated? or do I you don't mean, think it, it is. Does it need more? I think it needs more. That movie's incredible. So good. I mean, that movie, it, maybe it's a little too long, but like that's it's incredible. But that's also the entire value of the movie Agreed. is that the movie does the exact movie you think it's going to be and well. And it's like, now more movie. Right. right, and then it's like an act in which the lead character doesn't know what movie he's in. Well, no, but it's also walks like into a different movie favorite, and ruins someone else's. That's movie. That's the thing where it's like he's not fixed. FYI, right. Right. like he's learned some things. But it's not like he's mm. like a good person now. Yeah, because uh, that's not what happens to people. Hell yeah, it's not like long shot where you're like, why is this two hours? And they're like, I don't know. No one told us to cut it down. <laughs> Public enemies. John Depp. Chicago. Johnny Depp. Right. What's Johnny Depp's deal at this point? He's just kind Post of the Sweeney. biggest movie star in the world. Yeah. Right? Like, it's like the pirate sequels have come out. They made a bajillion bucks. Right. Uh, he did Finding Neverland. He did Sweeney. So he's gotten more Oscar nominations. Right. This is his first after Sweeney. His first movie. First after Sweeney. I, last good Depp. I was going to say, I mean, I think this is his last. I mean, apart from Rango, if you want to, like, I think he's oh, I still that. never seen Rango. I mean, Rang he, you he, would fuck with Rango. I know. Isn't I would really love Rango. what I love about Rango, per se, but he's good. I also think he's really good. That's the thing. I yeah. think he's really good in it. I, I'll say, uh, I don't know if it's just like a weird, like, hindsight thing now. And I think he's good in this, but I see, like, a lot of. I think he's good in this, but he's not great. He's not great, and the movie, if someone was going as deeply into this character as Christian Bale was into his character, mm -hmm. the movie would, would really be elevated. Right. Um, and I see, like, there's a story I remember hearing, uh, uh, it, was, it was actually, it was when I was uh, uh, iconically uh, portraying uh, Tony Rob Becker, the performance that would define the rest of my life, and the director on set was like, because I, I hadn't done much on camera stuff before. And he was like, look, it's like a weird thing and you'll like figure it out. And he's like, I remember having a friend who was working on uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Right. And he was telling me this Depp guy is like, there's nothing there. It's like insane. I don't know why people say this guy's a good actor. Right, right. He's mm -hmm. going to get fired from this movie. He's like not doing anything. Uh -huh. And then the guy went and watched The Dailies one day and he was like, the guy's a genius. And he was mm -hmm. like, Depp just knows exactly how to play to the camera. Like he's like. His relationship with the camera is so fucking strong. And that's a movie where he's very naturalistic. But he was like, still, if you were on set watching from the sidelines, it didn't look like he was doing anything. Right. It looked like he wasn't showing up to play. And Public Enemies, to me, feels a little bit like Depp is at this point where he's not, like, totally lost yet. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's phoning it in. No. But he's so aware of his tricks. Yeah. It's all but his I, tricks. It's all his tricks. It's tri and, and the I, tricks are effective. They're I I do like him. I think he's good and I think where he where it like reaches a limit is just in terms of like miscasting an age in that I just yes. think he's too old. I think it works I when, like at the end of the movie when he's kind of broken down, when he's yeah. paranoid, when he's got the mustache. Yeah. Like then I, I buy love. him a little more, but at the beginning of the movie he's like and and everyone else around him in the group is younger than him. By right. and large, yeah. 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 By at least five years or whatever. Right. Which makes a difference. I just think he's very effective in this. You need someone who's got the movie star energy. It is a bag of tricks performance. It, yeah. I think it it's is. Also... You need the movie star. You're right. You need, you need a marquee it. idol. Like, it has to be. And just yeah. who's got that glow. I don't know who else could have been Dillinger. I also, it was weird to rewatch this and kind of watch it through the lens of, like, it being about Depp's sort of like last ride, yep. essentially also like the public turning on Depp. This is the last time he 100%. looks good, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And he, he's yeah. still handsome and in this movie. He's still he's, handsome, I think but he's, he's very handsome in this movie. He's yeah. a little drawn and yeah. you can sort of see the kind of vampire Depp is coming. But you like, also feel like at this point you're like, maybe he's going to age well. Like yeah, he yeah. Had, for sure. He for had sure. not aged for so long where it was crazy where it's like Depp's 40, he still looks 20. Mm -hmm. And then at this point you're like, Depp's 46, he looks like... 40. 38. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. It was something to do with the fact that he drinks one cask of wine a day. <laughs> yes. 
Right. Uh, but, uh, well, no. What, uh, but his brain is poison? What he does is he hires someone to drink a cask of wine, and right. then he drinks their blood. <laughs> Uh, he taps their neck. Um, yes, I do think there is that kind of thing, and it, it it's it's one of these weird things about death that we're like constantly reckoning with now as a culture, where we're like, oh, but we always used to think like that bad boy thing was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now that we know that he's not just a bad boy, but he might be a bad guy, mm-hmm. you look back at some of the earlier stuff, and you're like, it was kind of fucked. Yeah. You're like totally. the whole time, all those signs were there. The other, he might be was like, not the most up and up guy. You're 100 percent right. In the same way with Dillinger, where it's like, oh my god, America loves this guy. He's like sticking it to the banks, yeah, and like right. giving it back to the people. And then and when, like he he loves his ladies and he sticks up for his guys. And you're like, like real rage issues and like yeah. And then when people start dying, it's like hard to essentially like rebound back from that. Right. And that was like the thing that I don't think they really touch on in this, but like sometime like maybe six months into his sort of like run, like a guy does get killed in one of their like bank robberies and Mm -hmm. Dillinger like could not reckon with the fact and how that would like affect his record. He's and he would just deny it vehemently because he didn't want that sort of stain on like the public image of that like Robin Hood persona he wanted to have. And so he was like, a guy didn't die. That had nothing to do with me like that. I'm not responsible. Well, that's the stuff I love in the movie that I think man is really tapped into is Mm -hmm. the movie star stuff and this whole notion of like he's this bank robber who's really obsessed with the public image and not wanting to lose the public. Well, yeah, he's like fucking LeBron with his stats where he's like, I right. gotta get eight rebounds a game. Like, we have to do the bank robbery in this much time right. and we have to get this much money. And yeah, and they give know. the people back their money at the bank. They just yeah, take the bank's money, yeah. but it's well, like, hey, nice classy. to women, nice to kids. I watched this with Joanna and when he did that, yeah. she was like, oh. And I'm like, yeah, right. that yeah, was their whole mm-hmm. thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. But Here's also, the bank's money, this not like, yours. This golden age of crime, like the last gasps, and then you have like guys like John Ortiz coming in, being like, "We can just do like wire transfers. Like we can just like you don't have to be like <laughs> yeah, putting on this thing whole show. He's like, You're annoying now. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like he made the FBI happen. Right. He did. And then right. And then the FBI cracked down on all the other guys who had like good systems. You know. Yeah. <laughs> right. But that this movie, the whole is... song and dance routine, is what's appealing to him, though. Exactly. Because in the end of the day, what does he do? He steals some money from right. a bank. Right. And every time he does it, it's a whole fucking thing. And he has to lie low and he has to like shack up at some farmhouse. Yeah. These mm-hmm. people are like, Jesus, John Dillinger keeps like eating all the biscuits. Right. <laughs> um, but um, wait, I, yeah, but this th- right. That, that's why the digital is so cool. Because this is like about like the end of analog. Right. Yeah. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, just the old mom and pop bank robbing just doesn't right. do it anymore. Yeah, you know yeah. the the the, sh- the outfit. They just want to like take five percent from every criminal transaction. That's how they'll make money. Right. That moment where Ortiz asks him, like, "How much did you make from that bank job?" and he like says the number with pride, and Ortiz is like, "We make that here like, every day. single day in a mm-hmm. fucking office. That's your biggest yeah. score ever." Right. Right. Um, I love a shady phone room, like bank room. Oh yeah, that to me, mm, I'm with like the big chalkboard and all the yes, like, yeah. yes, I love that. That's like also that's like. Peaky Blinder kind oh, of stuff. Too. My favorite show. My favorite show. Now here's don't the let me, in, put don't in a let me. siren because they're gonna talk for twenty minutes now. now I they will, call I themselves Peaky Blinder. Blinder. Do you they know why they water. call themselves Peaky? Yeah, Blinders? because the razor blades in their hat. That's I'm so a Peaky good. Blinders fan. Okay. Don't ask me why they're called Peaky Blinders. I know why they're called Peaky Blinders. I'll get no you water. water. Thank you. All right. Um, but, okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to point that well, out. Shady, season four shady of Peaky Blinders is amazing. That's yes. all I, I have to get to season four for it to be amazing. Oh, I mean, no, it's immediately You're that's good. That's the best one. No, season four is just where it so it jumps the shark so fully, and Adrian Brody gives oh a career gives a a career bad performance <sighs> that becomes god tier. Same career bad for Adrian Brody. He's got some he's competition playing, there. Yeah, he's been in some him, Chinese action movies recently. <laughs> Wait till you see him on Blinders. Pepper. He's doing like a sort of a. Like a who's he playing? Like an Italian, a 1920s Italian mobster. They make him speak so much Italian. Does he uh, overact at all in this? Toothpick in, this in the mouth constantly. <laughs> oh, and when you watch him, does do he him... have like a pizza pie on his head or something? <laughs> like, but then when he starts going, is he wearing to... stanza. <laughs> He's got 200 stanzas. They don't smell at all. Stacked up on his head at once. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then he starts going toe to toe with Tom Hardy, who's oh, also boy. career best. Right? Yeah. Isn't Tom Hardy playing like an, an evil orthod- rabbi? Or- Orthodox Jewish mobster. Yeah, 
<laughs> and they're fighting over just the like, price of rum. Shana! Like, it's just like usual. <laughs> it's crazy. He learned the word shalom that morning. Um, right. I just like this idea that Peaky Blinders like hires an actor, and they're like, "What's your actual cultural background?" Okay, and let's see. Well, the yes, polar yes. opposite of that is that's what's crazy <laughs> about <laughs> watching Adrian it. Brody. Nothing, nothing tops airstrike. <laughs> Adrian Brody's face on the poster for airstrike. I've never seen this image please, before, and I love it. Please, for me, find the one. There's like a Chinese action epic that has Adrian Brody. Nicholas Cage and I want to say Jackie Chan in it. <laughs> sure. I mean, sounds good. Get that poster. It's three good actors. Because it looks like Brody trying to out Cage Cage. Oh. Oh, is it this one? Is it called? I'm sorry, no, it's no. not Cage. It's no. Cusack. It's Brody oh, and Cusack. Yeah, yes, yes, I know mm. what you're talking about. Twitter socialist. And both of them are trying to become the new Cage of weird money laundering movies. <laughs> right, right. I believe I believe you're right that uh, Jackie Chan, I believe it's called Dragon Blade. Yes, and I think he's uh, got the and Jackie Chan. Oh, deserved. Yeah, that one's pretty wild. I'm trying to find the wildest poster because uh, eh, I don't know. I mean, he looks silly. There's no question. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> oh, that's silly. It's silly. <laughs> I think Cusack's it's no season four of Peaky Blinders, <laughs> but it is silly. Cusack literally looks like. Why am I wearing a Legionnaire costume <laughs> right now? You know what I mean? He just looks baffled. Chicago legend, John Cusick. Big Chicago. Big Chicago. Another big... Sh- he's big, right? Big he's tall in Chicago. Right? Adrian I mean, Brody's you- a Queens boy. Okay. He's from Queens. Yeah. You guys get everything. He went to LaGuardia. Yeah. Okay. LaGuardia. No one in Chicago Airport goes to LaGuardia. Why to <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> We all go to, to normal schools, like <laughs> that New is crazy, Trier, though, that, Prospect, like the, Meadows. That the, like the three tallest... Uh, uh, people in Hollywood all come from Chicago. Yep. Shannon, uh, Shannon, Cuse. Cusack, and Hoffner. Yep. Mm-hmm. You got it. David! Yes, Griffin? For a lot of us, our relationship with credit cards is complicated. Tell me about it. On Facebook, we go, it's complicated with credit cards. Uh, yeah, my personal relationship with credit cards has been, uh, well, sort of an evolution of, started out as me being like, well, those seem like a real mm-hmm. trouble area. I should avoid that. Mm-hmm. Then phase two is me being like, oh, I can spend. Oh, uh, yeah, no, no, sure. Give me some. And then pay- phase three being like, now I owe all this money. Right. Here's my relationship with credit cards. Phase one. I am scared of these things. I don't trust them. I don't want to engage. I have a checking account and a debit card. And that's how I'm going to live my entire life. Mm-hmm. Phase two is my father being like, Griffin, you're an adult. You should have <laughs> you a credit, credit score. Right, right. So I'm going to just take out a couple credit cards in your name <laughs> and keep them on a shelf. And I'll never use them and you'll get a credit score. And phase three is me getting a bunch of bills because apparently <laughs> those credit cards with my name on them have indiscriminately been handed out to other members of my family <laughs> who feel like they can do whatever they want without consequence. But this is the point, David. <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, we all have complicated relationships with credit cards. Yes. You feel like the ultimate freedom, yes. like it did for you. Go yeah, but then, uh, financial trouble. Uh, yeah, you know, like, some interest charges, uh, you know, right. some uh, fees that came out of nowhere. Right, long, terse phone calls with family members. I, I, this is the thing. I want to tell you about a new kind of credit card company. Okay. Okay? Yep, go ahead. I'm going to put my pedal to the metal. Okay. Talking about pedal. Ah, uh, yes. It's spelled with a T. That it, doesn't really pedal line up. is a new credit a card flower company. Pedal. Yes, that wants to help you succeed financially. It Change the way you think about credit. It's got an app that's designed to help you spend responsibly rather than just go into debt and then owe money. I mean, that sounds great. Uh, you know, it, this is the thing. You can qualify for higher limits. Yeah. Doesn't mean you should always spend to that limit. No. Uh, Pedals app lets you track your credit card spending against your own personal budget. Right. And they want to help you build your credit score. They reward you with more cash back when you pay on time. You can get 1% cash back right away and 1.5% cash back when you make 12 on-time monthly payments. So it's kind of a credit card that's trying to like keep you on the straight and narrow. And uh, we have to note that Pedal is partnered with WebBank member FDIC and WebBank issues the Pedal Visa card. We definitely have to make sure to clearly convey that. You know, it's about time. If you ask me, let me just check my watch here. Tap, 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 tap. Yeah, yeah. You know what? It's about 15 minutes past the time there was a smarter more modern credit card company that wants to help you succeed financially. Okay, so go to pedalcard.com slash check today to find out more. That's petal with a T, pedal, 
P-E-T-A-L card dot com slash check. Pedal card dot com slash check. Well, David, I'll say all of this sounded really easy, but that last part's a little stressful for me. You're telling me that I need Slash himself from Guns N' Roses to write a check to put up the money for me to start an account on Pedal? I got to get a Slash check? <sighs> Pedalcard.com slash check. Publark Animars. Publark Animars. Um, Jason Clark gets John Depp out of jail. Jason this Clark opening rules. I love it. Red Hamilton. Oof, uh, I love name. Jason Clark. Uh, and you know, I love his I, big you always head. look at the mugshot. Yeah. Not bad casting. Not great casting. This one's pretty good. He looks the most sort of period appropriate, I think. Yeah, because he's got a potato face. Yeah. I he's love got a that great face. Potato face. I want to. Oh, it. I want to touch his face so bad. I love that era, like the late two thousands, of just where like, Jason Clark will just pop up. Oh, yeah. I love it. Pop uh, him up. I love it because when I saw this, I definitely did not Cuck. know who like pre Jason Clark Jason right. Clark was. And now yeah. to rewatch, I was like, oh, yeah, Jason Clark's in here. This like, thing's got a lot of the like. I swear like, to Harry Mulligan for two shots. Two shots. Bizarre. That was kind of annoying, but it was before. I think it was before. Education, education even yeah. come out. It had premiered at but Sundance. But she was still Sally fucking Sparrow, you know? Show some respect. No, no. Best ever episode. I, I agree with that. That's my favorite one. Um, What else is Clark popping up in right around now? Let's see. Well, uh, he had done Brotherhood on Showtime, right? The oh, that's right. Brotherhood. With Jason Isaacs. Yeah. Good show. Never that seen was, it. I think that's Rhode Island Gangsters No or cable something? back the Jasons in Chicago. Uh, I never saw it, but the subway ads were great. Mm. Uh, he played the New York Fed chief in Wall Street Money Never Sleeps. <gasps> Ooh, ooh la la. Spoiler? About the money. Um, it never sleeps. <laughs> Don't tell me that. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, there's that movie, Lawless. Oh, Remember oh, that one? Which was supposed Hardy. To- Hardy with the batteries in the pockets. That was always the thing. That was supposed to be like a big deal movie because it was announced as Ben's handing us fruit snacks. Yeah, oh my thanks, gosh. Ben. Yes, I do need this. It was uh, announced as what? Thank you. What? Because it was, uh, what, John Helco, right, who had made the Correct. proposition, which was so Correct. fucking good. And everyone was like, this guy's going to be a big, 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 big deal director. Big, big deal. And then it was announced as Gosling and Correct. LaBeouf. Gosling, LaBeouf, Franco, and Amy Adams. Mm. Right. And then it became Chastain. Uh, Chastain. Clark uh, Hardy, LaBeouf. Hardy. Uh, Gary Oldman's in it. Guy, Jason Clark. Guy Pierce uh, playing an insane villain. A lot of faces. Right. He's got like no, no I never saw it. Everyone said it would be too violent for me. It's somewhat violent. It's, it's mostly boring. Can you imagine uh, how uh, fucking bug nuts that set must have been? Between Hardy and LaBeouf. Mm. I can't imagine. If only I was there. LaBeouf on the up and, you know, Hardy coming up. You know what I mean? Like, or I guess LaBeouf on the downswing and Hardy coming up. Right. LaBeouf's sort of, yeah, cresting. Yeah. Yeah. This is when LaBeouf uh, has, like, not had a flop. Mm. Uh, Right. Yeah. I don't know why we're talking about Lawless. So, So talking about Jason Clark. Right. So, Jason Clark is bringing Johnny Depp, Jonathan Depp, John Dillinger into prison. Correct. And they're but like, they're doing the old Chewbacca. Yes. That's what they're doing. He's pretending that he's the lawman. Yeah, that's what they called it back then. They did. In the Midwest. That's a it's Chewbacca, you say? It's a Chewbacca. Real Chewbacca. Come on. They say a lot of come on. Come on. Come on. Come on the with bears. the flat A's. Don't come do that again. I swear to God. Mike Ditka. Is he in this movie? <laughs> Mike Ditka is in this one. Yeah, he plays the law. <laughs> he played the bank. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you rob me. I got real pressure. I like they say pinch in this movie. Pinch. Pinch. Um, There's a lot of good little phrases in here I love. But but it's an old Chewbacca, and in fact, they've been smuggling guns into their guys. So now, uh, uh, Stephen Dorff. Ooh, Dorff. Sexy. Good performance. Very good in this. Mm-hmm. He's got the, a, a great face. Right. And this sort of opening, very little dialogue. The guy's taken over. Um, it, it's just a classic man stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the viscerality of, and the immediacy of, it's the thing that Ang Lee always says about why he's so obsessed with high frame rate, where he's like, I want to remove the window. Mm-hmm. This movie feels like the window's gone a little bit. without yeah. it having to be high frame rate bullshit. Right? Yeah. You guys always talk about um, Dark Knight mm-hmm. and Nolan mm-hmm. sort of referencing uh, right. Man, and this opening really feels that way, yes. especially. And this is the year after Dark Knight, mm-hmm. and now he's using Nolan's guy. Oh, is he? Well, he's, I'm saying he's using Christian Bale. Oh, yeah, okay. not camera guy. He's okay. using Dante Spinani, who's his, his regular his classic guy. camera guy. But yes, yeah. you're correct. He's using Christian Bale in um oh a David Sims nominated performance as <laughs> Melvin right. Purvis. I just simply don't understand. This. Hard to make. Can you give me your? T- I mean, I think this is very good. Oh, I think it's fun. totally <laughs> fine. I think he's very good in a character that does not ask him to do a bunch. I think he's like there. There's a couple scenes where he just blows my mind doing very little. I mean, my favorite scene, his best scene, is when he picks up 
Marion Cotillard. I agree with that. Like uh, all that, where like where he just looks at the um, the secretary. Oh when yeah. She's like, you can't treat a woman like that. And he like he's just walked in. He looks at the secretary for like one second, and you're like, he just communicated like a fucking paragraph. I think he like walks into the room. Certainly mm-hmm. a, a beautiful uh, uh, economy to his performance. And like he's playing like the man who was both publicly and maybe privately like the epitome of the G man, right? right? Like where mm-hmm. it's like I've got no passion here. Yeah. I don't want to get Dillinger because I hate him or he's my nemesis. It's my job. It's my job. Right. I'm just, you know. The- but, but then Hoover is sort of weaponizing the same sort of media that's making these gangsters into icons. Right. But I think I Kurtz think weaponized mo- media also, though, He did which a little bit. Don't, they don't, just don't talk about that they much really, in this. And, but also this movie doesn't talk about the fact that Hoover came to, like, resent Purvis because right. he was so yeah, famous yeah, 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 yeah. and he, like, right. pushed him aside. Yeah, because Purvis, like, had this thing of not being particularly charismatic, which I think, like, Depp does a good job with that this guy was like about the job he did love talking to the press right about sort of like where things were going and that is where like that Hoover scene is good that's when, when he's doing the press conference scene. and Hoover you can tell is getting a little jealous right and it's also he's his key is that he's so straightforward right like, that's his sort of magic trick with the press right doesn't mm-hmm. he make a joke it's like how did you you know how did you come to catch uh, Pretty Boy yeah. Floyd oh, he's yeah. like in an apple orchard and right. they're all like, <laughs> uh, like another another it's like, a good oh, counter to fucking, that Dillinger yeah, scene yeah we gotta talk about where Dillinger's yeah. you know like doing the press right. conference in he's the jail playing it up right um but but yes, this idea that yes, like we'll talk about Pretty Boy Floyd. Hoover, Fear okay, not. okay, okay. Hoover okay, was okay, using the, okay. the crime busters <laughs> and the G men and making his own newsreels and all these things. Right, making a whole making up a thing that didn't exist. The G man. Yeah. He wanted to be the star of those narratives. Like I'm yes. the Professor X of the G men, and I'm more important. Mm-hmm. And he resented that Purvis became his own kind of thing. Well, and he's he's got the chip on his shoulder about the fact that he was never really a lawman. Right. You know, like which the senators well, yeah. call him out on, where they're like, you never arrested? arrested anyone, you've never been a cop, essentially. But that's another yeah. thing in the first three minutes of this move where I'm like, oh my God, you're setting up every piece so well. Like you're setting up every theme. And then my problem is after the first 30 minutes, they start setting up more and more and sure, more. Right. And like everything you need for the movie is just kind of in the first 30 in minutes first 30 thematically. Minutes. I yeah, you're right. of two guys. Right. And when the book came out and they optioned it, I think the idea for a while was, oh, we'll do some HBO miniseries. Which yeah. it's now the obvious thing to say, but this feels like this subject, especially if the book covers this many people, is like a perfect fucking HBO show thing. It's kind of what Boardwalk Empire tried to do later, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. In a fictionalized sort well, not, of way. Not much longer yes. after this, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, a couple years later. Right. Uh, but um, you see the couple of movies that man maybe could have focused on is like, is it the Heat, Cat and Mouse, their mirror image guys? The difference between Purvis and uh, uh, Dillinger is it the idea of this like kind of nihilistic, like ne'er do well Robin Hood banker who just like does it all for the people. Bank robber. Uh, yeah, sorry. He's a banker. Uh, finding uh, one actual human connection in the last couple months of his life. Right. Yeah. That makes him want to actually yeah. figure out. How is it to- about this whirlwind year? Of just sort of right. like the rapid fire the succession of all of this. Of it's yeah. it's an elegaic like right. It's also right. it's like the, this is the end yeah. of the the right. the quote unquote wild west in this regard. But it, right, you know. Yeah. But it is one of those movies that feels like as it's going along. Like I I am very aware that movies are not made in order. Sure. But you're watching it and you're just like, oh, did they forget about <laughs> that that Crudup is in this? That Hoover's in this? Are you not doing anything else with him? Okay. But the most important character in the film, of course, is Pretty Boy Floyd, played by Chantat. Chantets, you love to see him. You simply love to see him get shot and fall in an this orchard. This feels like Michael Mann went to his casting director, mm-hmm. whoever it was, and was like, this is his character, Pretty Boy Floyd. Who's pretty right now? Yes. Like, get me a pretty boy. Yeah. And but- she was like, this kid Channing's popping. Yeah. Well, right? the other like, thing was that Channing, I think, was at the beginning of his, like, I want to fight against being a pretty boy thing. Like, get me in Soderbergh movies. Like, mm-hmm. he's trying to work with, like, people. Let's take a look at Channing Tatum's. Is this the Don't same year as G.I. Joe? Yep. So, a, a guy to recognize in your saints is 06, which mm-hmm. is his first, like, performance well, where you're like, this guy's got right. something. Right, and Step Up is 06, which same is his... Year. Right. He's good in that. It's a breakout. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then doesn't really do much until Step Up to the Streets, which is a cameo appearance, and mm-hmm. Stop Loss, which goes nowhere. So, 09, he's got Fighting, which mm-hmm. is a pretty bad movie. Same director, Dino, Dino Montiel. Montiel. But he's kind of good in it. Public Enemies for five seconds. G.I. Joe. Mm-hmm. Dear John is 2010. That's when he starts to blow up. And by 2000, 2011 is not really a hot year for him. It's like the dilemma in the eagle. 
2012 is when it's like effects? Haywire, 21 Jump Street, Magic Mike. Oh, you Side know. Effects 2013? Yeah. Gotcha. 2013 is Side Effects, This is the End, G. White G. House 2. Down, G.I. Joe 2, Don John, Fran's favorite My movie. Uh, cameo My in that car. one. And he plays like... the star of the romantic comedy. Is that right? That in he Don keeps John? seeing when he's like... Is it like him and Hathaway? I think so. Yeah. This, I mean, I've seen this, the first seven minutes of But this movie. is what's fascinating about him. Is like 2014 is where we're like, this is it. He's the guy. Tatum's going to be the guy. He's got Foxcatcher, which he's great in. Mm-hmm. He's Should have gotten the Oscar nomination. He's great. Mm, Ruffalo's good, too, though. Uh, both good. Over Carell. He should have been nominated for oh, best. I agree. Oh, yeah, sure. I agree. Fair. Yes. I agree. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Fat Nose Feratu. <laughs> that's your your joke it's a great joke uh, Calls him like a it's a beautiful uh, joke and 22 okay. Jump Street which makes plenty of money right Huge and amount. so everyone's like hell yeah mm-hmm. and then instead in 2015 you got Jupiter Ascending which bombs yeah. Magic Mike XXL which rules Perfect. but doesn't make a lot of money Underperform- I mean does well sure no one's so mad about it but it doesn't make that. like Magic Mike money yes uh, he's great in it you know his cameo in The Hateful Eight 2016 Hail that's Caesar more than a he's cameo. great in it Hail yeah, Caesar he's incredible in incredible and like Logan Lucky is great. I, I still love Channing, but I feel like he's now just not in things. I don't know what the What's fuck he happened. Well, he, he got nothing. divorced last year. I feel like he's got, feel like he's got personal life stuff that mm-hmm. has maybe taken over. Now he's in this very public Instagram relationship with Jesse J. Really? Yeah, that's who he's dating now. Mm. Bang, bang. <laughs> He has nothing in production. Wow. Well, he and Joseph Gordon-Levitt have had that like buddy musical sort of like floating for probably like five years but it's, now. It's not but, like they but, want to do. But also, he is not. Do, Joseph he, Gordon-Levitt right. is like not doing. They I mean, want of course to do guys was, and dolls. He was right? Migo in Sw- Smallfoot, as we all know. Of oh, course. Sure. <laughs> but his first, his last like non-voice performance uh-huh. was Kingsman: The Golden Circle, uh-huh. which, which he's barely, barely counts, in because he gets like knocked out five minutes in. Which you know he was supposed to be the fucking. Pedro Pascal character right. yeah, and the right. Tintin yeah, yeah, character yeah, yeah. were obviously supposed to be one character. Right. And then he had some other conflict. And so they were like, we're going to put you in a coma, yeah. split it, the character, and he becomes the villain. And then maybe spin it off or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah. They're now, but they're never going to do a third one now. They're I doing feel. a third no, they're one. Oh, they a third are. One. Prequel. That's happening. It's a prequel. Yeah, yeah, but it's a prequel. It's, so what, it's, it's Mark Strong centric? No, it's set in World War I. Ah, uh, who cares? It's, it's that far back? Yes, I thought, I who cares? It, I want it all in on Mark Strong. I do love how where it's like with Kingsman where they're like, who else is like a hot British guy? Can we talk about Pretty Boy Floyd's? thing that he says to Purvis. Yes, his last words. Because the last words are wrong and his real last words are so much better. His real last words are good, but I don't know if I agree with you. I think his last words in this are pretty good. His real life yeah. ones were, fuck you, I'm going. Wow. <laughs> Which is so pretty good. good. I'm pretty out of good. Fuck you, I'm good. Because they were like trying to ask him all these questions. Like, fuck you, I'm going. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, I do believe I you. love that. I love that it's one scene. Yeah. That it's just sprinkled in as like part of this like you know, it's all over. All mm. these movie stars, you know, bank robber stars are dying. Right, right. Like, it's this no was fun anymore. in real life after Dillinger was shot, though. Right, right. Dillinger yeah. was the first big guy to go. Whereas in this, you, like, feel the sort of, like, last. walls close in on yes. him. It's like, by this point, I think, by the time Dillinger dies, the guys who are dead or going to be executed in jail are basically from his crew. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, the Jason Clark, the Dorf, all these, or, or Dorf's still alive, I think, but his other two guys... David Wenham and the other David one Wenham. are like both right. in jail. Yep. Public uh, enemies. Public enemies. I think Babyface Nelson. Mm-hmm. I kind of vibe with that guy's energy. Played by Stephen Psycho. Graham in a yeah. classic uh, eleven out of ten like performance. <laughs> yeah. from I love yes. this. He has the best I Chicago think he could accent ramp it up. of anyone. He has the best line in the movie. Right. In my opinion. Which is when they're at um, Little Bohemia Lodge up in Manitowish, which I'll talk about Manitowish later because I've been to Manitowish. Um, is it just going to be that you've been to Manitowish? Whatever that is. David, you'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> leave me alone. Um, he has the best. <laughs> Can you not gang up on me? Back um, the fuck off, dude. What am I, a bank? Uh, he, he has the best line in the movie where he's like trying to get them to all stay out. And I just want to have it verbatim where sure, he just sure. like turns to the guy at the table and goes, this your wife, you egg, you dumb egg. This yes. your wife, you dumb egg. Yes. I love that. Oh, it's so good. Calling someone an egg. A dumb egg. We have to bring that back egg. now. Calling this, people eggs. This your wife, you dumb egg. Ugh. What are you, a friggin' night egg? I love calling someone an egg, a dumb egg, implying that there are smart eggs. Yes, Any kind of eggs. eggs. So, uh, Oh my god! Oh, he's so good. His accent's amazing. This is only a couple years before he's going to play Al Capone in um, 
Boardwalk Empire, mm-hmm. which oh, he's I also amazing. So I like he's oh, just got he's a British character actor who I guess someone just realized like if we could just give this guy a Chicago accent, he's perfect. Yeah. Like for well, any like old gangster movie. And I before you guys got here and David got here late, um, I was looking up what his sort of four things on IMDb were because he's only someone because he's one of those guys in a bunch of things that I'm only just now being like, okay, this is all, this is all Stephen Graham. Yeah. But I was looking up his four IMDb things. Sure. And you got to believe that one of them is from the fifth Pirates of the Caribbean movie where we all remember he plays a character named scrum <laughs> yes right, right. wow you had that right, i was like of right. course scrum that, the, he's he's in the the duck barrel movie so do you do you think <laughs> Can you please do that again do you think depp collects him depp's like i got just the guy for you you need a chicago pirate <laughs> imagine depp collecting you what a grim turn of <laughs> well, affairs well, hey david Inevitably, we can run all we want, <laughs> but Depp comes for us all. <laughs> Those little spindly fingers. Jesus One way Lord. or another, Depp will collect our like, souls. You're going to either see a good boy or you'll see Depp when you die. And if you see Depp, you're like, fuck, I'm going <laughs> to hell. Fuck. Archie, he's like, you are matey. <laughs> ah, sweetie. <laughs> Let's bring him back. Sweetie. Sweetie. I'm going to shave. I don't know if this <laughs> I'm I'm behind on your... Um, on your Burton episodes, why well, it's a quick breeze. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't. Nineteen know if- <laughs> movies, rock them. <laughs> but I don't know if you guys talk about or if David mentions the time that David and I were waiting for the subway together, and there was a poster for Green Book, and we were talking about Sweeney Todd, sort of unrelated. And David just turns to me and goes, "What if Sweeney Todd was in Green Book?" <laughs> like the most casual question in the world, and it's ruined Sweeney Todd for me. It's ruined Green Book, an already bad thing for me. But I think about it constantly. He's like Sweeney's in the back of the car. <laughs> the fact I I mean I assume the implication is it's not just someone playing Sweeney Todd but specifically Johnny Sweeney Depp. Depp. It's like that Sweeney Todd. <laughs> right. right, right, right. They should have put him in some more movies. Just Sweeney. <laughs> Sweeney. Yeah. He's just like in the in the Incredible Hulk. Right, people didn't I'll, like this I'll musical. Get you Hulk for you. I'll make his throat sing. <laughs> yeah. I want you bleeders. <laughs> He said, like, a Nancy Myers movie, like, goes on a date with Meryl Streep. I'm a bomb. <laughs> I heard you're a demon bomber. Just a regular bomber. Boys. Boys. How about, how about a tug of gin? David. 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 Yes, what's up? It's a hot town, summer in the city. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the hot outside? Yes, I'm aware. It's been brutal. It has been b- a brutal. It has been a brutal. That's true. And the thing that people aren't talking about is New York City smells terrible right it's now. It's a stinky place. I was on the subway here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the subway had its own smell. And then the doors opened. Yeah. And a whole new smell entered yes. from one station. Right. It's tough. And it's not like uh, one is good and one is bad. They're all bad. All, all the bad. smells out there all right bad, now. All bad, all different. Very bad. Yeah. And uh, it's not a New York like specific all new, all different. It is like the X-Men only all different. Uh, it's not a specific thing because I tweeted. I said, you know what? I don't like it when it's this hot outside. And people said, hey, you know what? I don't like it when it's this hot outside in my part of the world, in my neck of the woods either. Right. So I think we're dealing right now with what the scientists would call a stinky earth. It's a stinky place I right now. I think it's now. a sticky, stinky earth right now. And it's kind of amazing how you can really solve what we're talking about. Flutter, 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 tweet, tweet, tweet. <laughs> With just like a simple color. Oh, look what just landed on my finger, David. Yeah. I held my finger out like Snow White herself and, hmm, hmm, a whiff of a beautiful aroma. Why? It's a scent bird. It's a scent bird. What I really love about scent bird, and this is their big pitch to everyone for using this service, is that you get to have a variety of different kinds of fragrances at your disposal because if you buy one bottle, there's no way you're going to go through with, through that in, like, years. You're a wild horse, Ben. You can't be tamed down. <laughs> you, you, they, you can't commit to one scent. You need to rotate. Well, right. no, it's more of that I really have respect for people who make fragrances and for the tradition of it. Because it's a, it's a human thing that's existed for, for a really long time. And right. It's so easy to poo-poo it, just like you poo-poo fashion. Well, you're also, like, why would you put cologne on? I already smell good. Well, it helps no, you smell smells. like yeah. smell like bad deodorant. Yeah, you, yeah, you know? yeah, I know. So I know. class yourself. But then this a is bit. the problem. Anytime I buy a bottle of cologne, it's like you know, extremely expensive, and I never use it, and it just sits on my shelf gathering dust. I still haven't ran through my Michael Jordan cologne. That was 1997. 
it's scent bird. Then working on the one bottle. They send you like a little bit of the fragrance. You know, a ni- not, not, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a you know, substantial amount, but like it's a practical amount for a practical price. It's like a little travel size. It's like a little, you know what I'm saying? It's a subscription service. They send you as much as you need per month. You can mix up your cologne and perfume routine. You can discover new colognes and perfumes without buying an entire bottle. And they got 450 designer brands to choose from. So I discovered actually a couple of new ones. The one I'm really, really into is Confessions of a Rebel. What? <laughs> that, that does sound pretty About bad. last night. Yeah. It's just like very elegant and it's it's masculine, but it's, it's subtle. I really just like it. The, wait, yeah. that is what the cologne is called? Well... The name of the company is Confessions of a Rebel. And the cologne is called About Last Night? That's right, sir. Hey. Sometimes Ben's asking about last night. Tom Ford makes really great stuff. Yes, Gucci those makes are really some of the ones Burberry, I got. I got some Fords. Prada, I, I just mean, like an auteur. Of course. You know, can make it my cologne. Look, and maybe someday we'll do a Tom Ford miniseries, and we'll cover the cologne on a bonus episode. So if you're interested in- Pod- Paternal animals. Yeah. If you're right. interested- You don't like it? No. In getting you're not into, into that? No. Scents- and you want to maybe like explore, try stuff out, find one that you really like, make that your signature smell. This is a way to approach that process as well. We're talking about scent bird. Yeah. Now I'm emphasizing the T here sure. because sometimes the name is difficult to hear. That's true. But it's scent bird, like this little birdie on my finger. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Well, they have an exclusive offer for just our listeners. You can get 50% off your first month today. That's only 7 Dollars and fifty cents for your first fragrance. Okay. Go to scentbirds.com slash check and use code check for fifty percent off your first month. Okay, David, I have to correct you. This bird is not a chick, okay? No, check. Check. Oh. That's S C E N T Bird dot com slash check for you to try your first cologne of perfume for just seven dollars and fifty cents. Sign on and smell amazing. Oh, what an ad break. Oh, my oh, God. What a relaxing ad my break. My eyes are wet from episode. weeping with, with, with laughter. <laughs> Sweeney. Sweeney. <laughs> so what's Public Enemies about? They robbed some fucking banks. The golden Robs age bank. of crime. Uh, Jason right. Clark, Stephen Dorff, um, David Wenham, weird career. Yeah, definitely. Bush did 9-11. <laughs> I'm very tempted to just repeat my old Coutier joke. Please do. Mike was a gore fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so he meets her at a at restaurant. At the Aragon ballroom. Sure, where Fran yep, once so saw bored. some people. And some teens Lord. waiting for a G-E-Z. Mm-hmm. This uh, is sort of an uptown. What I will say about a lot of this movie and a lot of the Dillinger stuff. Uptown uh, movie? Yeah, uptown movie. Yeah, or just like um, east, east up. East and up. Okay. So we're talking like East Lakeview, which is where I live my last two years, up through uptown, like. Uptown Franny Hoffs is what Uptown Franny you know. Hoffs, yeah. yeah uptown Franny um, Hoffs. Franny is like a nickname I do accept, but like you have to make that choice, you know? Yeah, it's to a rare call one. me that. Right, right. And like there, you'll, I, you're saying you'll never suggest it. I'll Your never name, suggest it, but I'll answer to you. What you mostly it. use is a nickname. Yeah, Fran. it is. And I'll answer to Francis too, but sure. it's like, it's again, name. you Fran, got it. Francis is your full? Full name, yeah. Wow. I didn't know Francine. How dare. Francella. Sure. Uh huh. No, it's Francis. <laughs> um, Quite an uh uh-huh for Fran there. <laughs> All right. Um, power through this. Um, Uptown, Franny, Uptown House. Franny House. I always lived like north and towards the lake because my belief in Chicago is like, why would you live in the best city in America mm. and not want to be by the giant lake that is basically an ocean? No, sure. no New York has a river. What? Get, get to see the... Uh, the so does Chicago. I mean, we no, got I a river and a lake. You said best city in America. Was the boat tours? Yeah, I don't understand what you're saying. Um, <laughs> what? Boat tour? The On tour. the lake? No, yeah, it's just no. a big lake. Oh, you just, just get to lake. look at it. It's so, it's and you're like, wow, yeah. it's a big honking lake. And so a lot of this Dillinger stuff does take place in sort of like Edgewater, Uptown, East Lakeview. Mm-hmm. A lot of his hideouts were like, I was like doing a lot of Google Mapsing while reading this book. And cool. it's like, you go you go around in Chicago and it's like, ah, Dillinger was here and Capone ah, Chicago, was here. Yeah. Yeah. Big hot yeah, dog. Come on. Right. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you you don't really believe that these guys were everywhere that you hear that they are. And yeah. then reading this book, it's like, oh, they were the Dillinger just... hideout was around the block from my last apartment I ever lived in. You know, Billy Frechette's apartment is like across the street from a different apartment I used to live in. These Your guys landlord are... was a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. That's a great joke, Ben. That was beautifully executed. I think that one gets 10 comedy ben, points. 10 comedy yeah. points. You just stole 10 comedy points. Hey. Hey. Your money, I mean, your comedy points Give in your life. Give me the points. Yeah, right. 
I, I'm just thinking no. now about uh, this. All sounds very complicated. I feel like this. Should what do you think? It's, it's a pretty it's easy clear. to navigate city state. with a with a grid is? system, and the the lake is to the east, so you always know where to orient yourself. I never right. know where I am here because there's no lake. You uh, know? Yeah. The, when the numbers are going up, east is. To yeah, but right. where's the lake? Is there a little lake in Central Park? <laughs> hey, it's a pond. It's actually um, a reservoir. When you. Everyone oh, just went real whoa, quiet. Whoa, it's the Jackie the... Anasis Reservoir. Oh, my. I guess so. Oh, God. Right. You could cut the air with a knife wow, right now. To a halt. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, okay. Wait a second. Grand jewel. Wait a second. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. Wait a second. God, there's fucking jewel clouds climbing the sky you. right oh now. My God, ben. I just needed that to get through that ben, moment because I felt myself <sighs> sort of overcome with rage. Um, Fran, what's your flavor? It's cucumber. Wow. All right, so is ben that good flavor. or bad? Ben favors a mint, yeah. and uh, cucumber and mint they feel like sister flavors, I guess. Yeah, I think they're fresh. Yeah, I think they're on sort of the same level. What other can I get though? Like, what other flavors? They got mint. Mangy? Yeah. Mangy for cream. children, I think. Yes. Mangy's yeah. for children. Mangy isn't it? Creme is... brulee is for children. What's mangy? Mango. Mango. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Ben said I went with it. <laughs> okay. um, I, kinda, I was thinking the other day, I kind of want to vape in an acting role. Sure. If I ever work oh ever again. Oh, my vapor. Jude right, Law, right, right. Icebox Lux. Yeah, I feel like people haven't really made made a lot out of like on-screen vaping, vaping yet. And, you know, there are nerdy vapors. Of course. Me. Who have like. Well, like have the rigs <laughs> with like all the like you can oh, like I you can like control yeah, yeah. the voltage. I mean, I don't know why you're suggesting to me. I, I play in ice cool, <laughs> <laughs> super laid back vapor. I oh, don't yeah, understand why. I, I'm so right. sorry. Control the voltage. What? Yeah. what? Yeah, so that you know how you, there's those videos where people have like massive vape clouds yeah. Yeah. because they turn right. the voltage up, so it's just cooking that oil, baby. Have I ever thought by the time I went to go see a movie? This is the choice you've made, Fran, mm -hmm. to associate with these dinguses. I went to go. Well, this is why I got the jewel. Because you want to be like Ben. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why. No, I just kept finding myself sort of. Um, Involved with people who jewel, and I was like, "What if I cut out the middleman and buy my own jewel and hang out by myself?" <laughs> oh, that's really smart. Yeah, so that's sort of that was the the yeah. the thing there. What were you going to say, Griffin? I'm sorry. I went to go see a movie with my mom, and sure. I went to the bathroom afterwards, and I, I had to go number two. I had to <laughs> drop a Thor, and uh, <laughs> friends upset right now. I had to drop the hammer. What is Jesus? But I go, I go <laughs> in more metaphors. <laughs> I go metaphors. I do my business quickly because I'm a professional. Okay, <laughs> right. Right, right, you're like Dillinger. <laughs> minute 40, flat. Right. But, like a minute into that minute 40, <laughs> like five unruly teens come in. Shit, Sneaky Boys? A couple Sneaky Boys. Come out of a g Easy concert? They brought were, it back. They were seemingly in no rush to go anywhere because they <gasps> just wanted to film themselves doing vape tricks. Film cool. themselves. Jesus. So they were doing take after take. I mean, the fucking Stanley Kubrick of, of mm. fucking vape tricks over here. Sure. Of them doing this thing, and so I'm just in the. And you're like, do I leave? You were, you were afraid right. to like mess with the shot, is what you're saying. Well, I was. You like, don't want to disrupt just, the there's process. There's no one else in the bathroom. These guys are doing this thing, and at a certain point, they're like, "And this guy's been in the stall." They didn't Which say guy. The nightmare. Right. right they were right. like, "This guy's someone's taking a shit in here." Right, and I was right, like, right. I "Now am. you're in the video." So now it's been eight minutes. <laughs> I'm just sitting hostage while these guys are like going like, no, 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 man, that was whack. That was whack. New take. We got to, we got to try another take. Right. Yeah. I'm like, it's been Sometimes it's like that. I think I was genuinely in there for close to 15 minutes before <laughs> I was like, fuck this. They're never going to stop. Right. Call your right, mom. Right, right, right. <laughs> and I like open the door and they all like look down and we're stifling laughter. Right. And I was like, because at this point, they're like, you basically must have been doing your taxes in there. Right. Like you've been right. in there for so long. They can't not look, acknowledge look. it. Do I do my taxes when that time comes every year at yeah. the AMC Village 7? <laughs> of course. In the bathroom? Of course. This was not that time. What 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 movie did you see? I'm trying to remember. But they like stifle their laugh and they look down and then one of them goes, <laughs> You just took a shit. <laughs> and they all started Candy laughing. Observation. Right. And then I went, Yeah, well, at least I didn't spend ten minutes doing vape tricks. You said no. that? I said it and walked no. out of the bathroom. Oh my god. My gosh. Oh, I, that's why you're a ghost now. That that was where you died. I died. Yeah. Right. Literally dead. I oh, like to, uh, I like to, to give uh, some of my comedy points to that uh, young man. <laughs> <laughs> the young man who said, yo, you just took a shit. Very good joke. How yeah. many points you dap at him? I'll throw a four. <laughs> yeah. Four mm. points for the no, shit. No, I'll throw band. two. I'll throw two because it's like it's appropriate Wait. for the story. It might have been missing Moana for the second time. Jesus. 
So in Public Enemies, John Bellinger <laughs> robs all these banks. Yes. And they bring on Melvin Purvis to go get him mm-hmm. after, in the movie, having killed Pretty Boy Floyd. I don't They're know like, why you guys are saying this plot's complicated. Simple. I mean, yeah, it is right. just a guy looking after another guy. But the thing is, the FBI doesn't really exist at this point, no. or it's in its, it's inception. It's still the Bureau of Investigation. Right. And they're really bad at their jobs. So yeah. essentially, for the extent of the movie, is they're just like fucking up getting Dillinger over and over again. And they haven't invented any crime fighting methods yet. No. Right. I mean, and right, most it's like of that these... Mulaney joke, or like, where it's like, it used to be, you're just like, I got a hunch. Uh, <laughs> it's gr- like being a Oh, cop. a guy died here. Ah, gross. And then moving <laughs> yeah. on. Clean up that blood. <laughs> no, I, I wrote that down in my notes. Right. Like, that's how bad they are at their jobs. And it's also this thing of like, well, when they're having those like he- congressional hearings about like yeah. why this needs to exist, and they're like, how many guys have you arrested? Right. It's like, I haven't. But it's also like, a lot of these G men like didn't know how to fire guns. Right. And there's also this, like, I mean, bureaucracy on local police who do know how to fire guns. Right. And there's all these, like, multiple instances of, like, local police not collaborating with the FBI and then both let everyone get away constantly. Well, and that's one of these elements that you feel like would have been its own episode if this were a miniseries, which is Purvis being like, we got to bring in Texas lawmen. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, we need which guys who know to how to, do. like, hunt people Probes. down. And yeah. that's when you bring in Lang. Sheriffs. Yeah. Who yeah. just looks like a slab and is awesome in this movie. Right. It's the same he's year great. as Avatar. He's yeah. so good in this movie. Yes. Um, And he's even more just the facts than Bale. Is this it's his, his only, only like, hardcore. man movie? No, because he's in... um. Manhunter. Oh, of course. Of course, of course. Yeah. But, like... Uh, he's in, fucking Pretty Boy Floyd in Manhunter. In the most against type. Yeah. Right, he's playing, like, Rita Skeeter. <laughs> Have you seen what he looks like in Manhunter? Which one is he in Manhunter? He plays the journalist. Oh, th- yes. He, yes, he yes, yes, yes. He gets lit on fire. Yes, and, yes, yes. I wheelchair. remember. I think I just didn't put it together. That no, that I mean, was because, Lang. like, that doesn't well, look like sure. Stephen Lang. Yes. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Manhunter and Heat are, like, the two man's man films I've seen besides this one. Uh, he looks like Woody Harrelson, uh, <laughs> Cletus <laughs> Cassidy. Of- yeah. Right, yeah, right, of, uh, right, right. Like this is that's him. crazy to think those those same, two men are the same, same man. man. Right. Yeah, yes. Um, in two he, different. He's man one films. of those classic. Like he hits fifty and figures out what to look like. Yes, guys, mm. I feel like right, right. Um, go on. But yeah, but the the FBI just like fucks up all these different, like I don't know, like captures and yeah. like mm-hmm. yeah, I mean stakeouts. Is, like the thing at the they apartment. don't do anything right until they get done there. Right. And they get yeah. Dillinger mostly by buying because, an informant, you know, yeah. like by pressuring this. And it's uh, that the Chicago Madden. Underworld has also yeah. like sold out Dillinger yeah, the because Chicago he's bringing, he's sick he's of bringing him. Right. Yeah. He's bringing this this yeah. infrastructure about. Right. Yeah. But right. the fuck up, the fuck up at the like uh, apartment building was like maybe not quite as remarkable as that like little Bohemia fuck up, which is like disastrous in the FBI history. Um, Wh- is that one the one where that? they go in, in for that's baby the Nelson? That's the Manitouish one. Uh, oh, yeah. The apartment one is when they I go I love in that whole sequence. The apartment yeah, building. That, that whole yes. sequence is incredible. You mean where the car is blocked. It turns out yeah. like the, the, the feds are blocking themselves or yeah. whatever. Right, yeah. Right. And just like, I think the movie almost doesn't. And then it turns out it wasn't even Dillinger at all. It was the right. other guy. Right. right. They're yeah. like not. Man's just not hammering home how embarrassing this is. I think I it feel. kind of is. I mean, it's. I guess it's more just. It's so no no one's ever embarrassed in a man like it's just, it's so that's locked true. up. But that but, also you know, speaks to the la- will call you and be like. Mm. I think that speaks <laughs> to the lack of focus in the movie sure. because it felt like it was more just like it's the cat and mouse thing, right? Mm-hmm. And it was just the back and forth. It would feel like okay, you're getting this sense of the the dialogue happening between these two guys trying to outwit each other. Yeah, but then you have things where it's like when when Coutier enters, it's like twenty minutes of just like honeymooning. Uh, like the yeah. movie becomes like mm-hmm. the most overtly romantic thing Michael Mann has ever done. Yeah, which is these two movie stars like being beautiful and kissing each other a bunch. Then he gets kind of good, right? It's kind of good. Yeah, I Marianne's mean, I'm with her great. till she like says, "Yeah, until Mil- she says- Milwaukee." <laughs> but then, and then he- my mama moved us to Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> she gets so close in every sentence. He gets apprehended. Goes yeah, to jail. In Arizona. Goes to jail. His one dialogue scene with Bale is really fucking good. Ugh. Incredible. And that's yeah. my I mean, I other favorite that. Bale scene. I love that. Right. But that's where I think yeah. Depp's amazing also. Yeah, Depp's both, great. Yeah. I think I mean, they're both at their best there. Yes. Yeah. When yeah. he says 100%. he's in no rush to get back to Indiana. Ooh, I love it. And then they take, yeah, him, to, that's, they take him to Indiana. He does that cool press conference thing. He does that press right. that, And that's that's all real. You got Lily he Taylor did as the, uh, talk the sheriff. In those days, is that just like the like the music? The Chicago way. Of talking in that yep. time, you just like had to have like little witticisms yep. to end every like phrase. Yep. Everyone talks like that in Chicago now. Yep, you dumb oh. egg. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
uh, yeah, that's just that's just how it was. Um, <laughs> Lily Taylor, you said, is that? As the sheriff. She's amazing. Yeah, that, and that was also like a thing where like some other gangster killed her husband, and that's where it just like she took over. She took over. She's like, well, I'm the sheriff now. That's awesome. Fuck. And she was and she was good at Give it. Give me a movie about her. I know I that's cool. Say. They just Starring like don't Lily really Taylor, preferably. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's great. And they have you know the court case where he's got his like boisterous big lawyer, Louis. Piquet. Yeah, the guy from The Wire. That guy's fucking oh, incredible. That, scene that guy. And that's is almost verbatim. So, also, he's a real sort of like he Willie is just Stark figure. like an overstuffed bratwurst. Like uh-huh. right, he's just like that's what I like to hear. Right. <laughs> yeah. And he, he that guy. Now we're talking. Has played so many like Irishmen and like right like he's yeah. uh, I love that. Actor. But it's What's also his like name? I don't know. But like, and then you know Depp breaks out of jail. We can talk Peter about that Garrity. with the wooden gun sort of after that. But then it's like. The FBI like didn't have tails on any of the people sure. affiliated right. with Dillinger. Like they never had a tail on his lawyer who he was meeting with once a week after yeah, breaking out of jail. Just this like is these the, simple you things. Break a few eggs. There were a few uh, feel dumb eggs. Dumb eggs. Yeah. You know, night eggs. Dumb eggs. Yeah. To figure out how to do all this. And it's not that Dillinger was like amazing at this. It's just he was He's good. He's not amazing at, he, at it at all. He walks into a bank, points a gun at someone, leaves. That's yeah. all he can do. It's yeah. not like he's good at this. He's, yeah, yeah, but it he's was not a genius. Age. These guys were artists back then. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta break a couple of dumb eggs to make a dumb omelet. We forgot to mention yes, exactly. Uh, uh, that's the tagline to Night Eggs, I think. It's got a ring to it. You're bringing dumb and night. I feel like it should be Night Eggs. Oh. Should break a couple night eggs to make, make a, a couple night, night, night omelets. omelets. Oh yeah, fuck. All right. Um, but uh, thanks for letting me workshop that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah just like space. the FBI this were is... workshopping. Yeah. Me and Grass criminal. Criminal. Uh, We forgot to mention that early in the bank robbing scene where the the guy dies. There's that great shot of oh, him like, my, being dragged along. The best shot in the whole movie. The, where he's using a piece of score from Hans Zimmer's uh, Thin Red Line score, which is bonkers. Oh, weird. Yeah. Um, and like that's what you're talking about, right? Dillinger's whole like. No one ever dies around me because I'm fucking invincible thing. Yeah. And then anytime anyone does die, it's like he another sort of like, sort of like flips out, right, yeah. another like piece of his armor shaved off. Mm-hmm. There, there's something here. I mean, uh, you know, like film has its own speed and it changes performances. And that's, you know, there are all these like uh, sort of idioms about like, you know, the camera uh, uh, adds 10 pounds and everything slowed down on film. So you want to move super fast, all these things. And then when you put it in, like, a video like this, I feel like all these speeds change. And for whatever reason, performance and uh, the format on which it's being captured, uh, this movie gets so right, uh, I say as if I uh, know from experience, but it feels like it captures the moment when uh, life leaves someone's eyes. Yes. yes. Like, yes. that moment when he's holding the guy outside the car, the but also when it happens to Jason, Jason Clark, Clark too. Too. Incredible Oh, my God. I, right. love, I love Clark in this movie. And he's I love good. when... Dillinger brings Billy home, and then there's that like quick shot of Jason yeah. Clark bringing some other woman in his room, and it's just like, ladies, if John Dillinger brings you home, you go with Jason Clark. Right, there, that's the guy you go in the room with. There's something about the messiness so of good. video that's able to pick up on those little yeah. details where yeah. when someone just shuts off, it's mm. even more startling. That's scary, because the other best death scene I've ever seen is fucking Billy Lynn. Right, um, when when Vinny yes. D kills the guy in the tunnel. That's an incredible scene. And you're just like this is a st- this is the only time a death scene has ever looked realistic, right? Uh, I don't know. Never seen that. But you haven't taken the walk. I haven't taken the walk. Take I love walk. that up though. Oh well, love that up. Okay. Very special. More people. It's not impossible it's that not more people listen more to that people episode listen. than have watched that movie, considering it's embarrassingly low box office take. Especially at it, least I in mean, this country, in its proper format. As intended, oh, I in think, its proper mm-hmm. format, right? I think totally. more people have probably right. listened to the podcast. I agree with you. So basically, they have this like big fuck up in Wisconsin at uh-huh. the like little Bohemia Lodge where I have not been, but I have been to Manitowish, Wisconsin, because one of my closest friends worked up there for like four years. And instead, this was one of the places we could have had dinner when I was up there. And instead, I opted, I will say, for a restaurant called Gooch's because I was like, I got to go to a place called Gooch's. Good Doesn't name. sound like you made a bad choice. Yeah. Um, We had a great meal. But my buddy was saying he's a teacher up there and that they do take students to the Little Bohemia Lodge cool. every like, sort of year. And there are still like bullet holes there. And it's like totally like fully operating like Airbnb, not Airbnb, regular B&B sort of like hotel <laughs> setup With bullet holes? Yeah, yeah. In the walls. They Camera just. Rolls. Yeah. Um, and they did shoot it there. But like that whole situation was such a fuck up because what. The movie, I think, doesn't do a great job explaining is that they killed civilians leaving. Jeez. Yeah, that in sucks. That, right. That's like they they saw a car going as they were doing the stakeout and assumed it was like Dillinger and Co. But it's like 
it was a hotel. Other people were staying there and they were all leaving. And then they like opened fire on like a car. The continental breakfast bar. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, Stephen Graham's inside calling people dumb eggs. They're just like opening (laughs) fire on like civilians. Yeah, uh, no good. Very bad. Don't do it. And, (laughs) And Dillinger after that really like cannot show his face. And so that's like that's it with him and Billy Frechette in like real life. Because he's just like, well, oh, I wow. can't go back to you because like they're going to tell you because they're looking for me after this whole big fuck up. Right. Right. Because in real life, they only dated for like four months or something. Yeah. It's like crazy short. And then right. it's like then they did arrest her. But then after that, he's like, oh, yeah, I can't go back to Billy because like they've got tails on Billy. And so he has this new girlfriend, Polly Hamilton. I love her. And she looks so good in this movie. And like, I know more. I, I wish there was the more theater. of that. That Polly Hamilton yeah. character is interesting because she was always like, I'm not dating Dillinger. And like Honest Sage in real life was like, that's Dillinger. And then she's like, are you Dillinger? And he's just like, well, and then she's like, I don't think he's Dillinger. Like, and he had introduced himself as Jimmy or whatever. And she's like, right. I just don't think so. But that's just like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. And like never went on the record as ever like knowing like in all interviews was just sort of like, no, there's my boyfriend, Jimmy, like really sort of stuck to wow. it. But like, whereas didn't Billy Frechette sort of cash in after his death, yes. giving yes. all these speeches being like yes. crime does not pay. Example I, number one, John Dillinger shot in the face. I believe she Stephen did a Lang. touring review show called Crime Does Not Pay. Hell yeah. Good with title. the Dillinger Crime. family. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they do. When they come back to her, it is if they do go to the lake. Yeah. Sit out on the beach. Have mm-hmm. a very deep conversation. I will say everyone About who's. the bears. No, oh, well, David Fran is producing a David, Tommy gun David, and loading David, it. David, that's not fine. They talk about the bull. <laughs> Getting really riled. Um, everyone who's ever lived in Chicago flushed. has. Don't. Midwestern people don't get angry. Uh, 